Hello to all you hip skips out there, and welcome to the jungle. Join Disney historian David Dr. Skipper Marley and art director and crooner Trevor Kelly as these former jungle skips explore the world of Disney, pop culture and theme parks. But hold on tight because just like a jungle cruise, their conversations often head deep into uncharted waters. Now, grab a seat and enjoy Expedition 27, reindeers in space, skipper sorting hats, and you take the five freeway to get to Pandora. Move it up, skips. Hello, how's it going? Hey, I am, uh, I'm actually very excited. I'm not that I'm never excited. Yeah. I'm very excited for today for some reason. Oh, yeah? I don't, I don't know why. You don't know why? There was, oh, I think I'm energized still off Dapper Day. Cool. I think how, that might be it. And how was that? Uh, dapper as hell. I saw your Instagram. You looked very handsome. Uh, that's that sweet new camera we got. We got a new Fuji camera. Nice. And um, it was a blast. I haven't been to Dapper Day since uh, they had the expo in the Calif- Grand Californian ballrooms. Okay. So uh, it's over at the Disneyland Hotel now. And uh, it Far was more dapper. Far more dapper. Yeah. Uh, mid-century appropriate. And mm-hmm. uh, it was great. They throw a great event. The bands were incredible. Uh, Groove Empire Orchestra, uh, who I found out later, the cat that runs Groove Empire Orchestra uh, also played a uh, bass on my Christmas album. Oh, no way. Which was wild. Yeah. Like, oh, my gosh. This guy's smoking. And then they, uh, I talked to one of the bandmates, and they're like, oh, you're going to talk to Lakshmi. I'm like, oh, he played on my Christmas album. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably know this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is so cool. It was really cool. I saw a video of people dancing. I didn't know it was like a whole It was a whole thing. thing. Yeah. And that was free? You could just walk in and dance? No. Uh, uh, you pay to get into the expo. Come on, Disney. But uh, the it's worth it, I would say, because yeah. the vendors in there are aces. It's really good stuff. Yeah. Um, I also uh, think I destroyed uh, the rest of some teenage girl's life. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's my job as a professor. Now, as we've shown this year, not the best at interacting with children. Uh, it's not my strong suit. Okay. So I'm in line at uh, Napolini Pizzeria. Okay. Uh, over uh, in downtown Disney, picking us up dinner. Oh, yeah. There's this family and there's these two, uh, I would probably say teenage daughters. Uh, we're all waiting for our pizzas mm-hmm. and the daughters have Disney bounded for Dapper Day. Okay. So. I'm just waiting for my food, minding my own business, uh, dressed in my dapper best, which, funnily enough, just how I dress to go to like wine colony or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There You're is no different. <laughs> and so this one girl, she's she's looking at and she says with the like she has the confidence of like a 50 year old man. OK, like confidence I would never have <laughs> talking to a stranger. Uh huh. She just turns she's staring at me. She goes, you look really dapper. It's a really nice outfit you got on there. Like, just like that. Uh-huh. And she's like a 12, 13-year-old girl. Oh, really? Oh, so she's a younger one. She's okay. young. Yeah. Good for her. And I'm like, oh, thank you very much. I, I like your guys' outfits, too. And uh, so she was dressed up as Ursula, like a dapper Ursula. Okay. She'd done her hair and everything. And her sister uh, said, oh, I'm dressed as Captain Hook. But everybody uh, tells everybody keeps thinking I'm Gaston all oh. day, and I go, "Oh yeah, because of your huge muscles." <laughs> just an easy throwaway joke. Yeah. And I watched her just leave her body, oh, and she didn't no. talk ever again. No. If there's anything teenage girls like, it's comments about their body <laughs> and their physical appearance. I had no idea. I yeah. just thought it was a throwaway joke. It got. To the point where I'm like, do I say something? Do I go, I, ju- I was just joking. I didn't actually mean you have massive arm muscles. That just means you're healthy. and That's going to be the that's, that's the linchpin of her becoming a UFC fighter. You're her villain origin story. I, I felt so bad. So, Candy, they're going to call her like Candy the Crusher. So, what's your villain? <laughs> I was a dapper day one day and this guy said, I had muscles. I got to find him. <laughs> I now I dominate him. the octagon. <laughs> I had a fun experience with a child uh, at I, while you were being dapper. Mm-hmm. I was hanging out in Bakersfield, a very dapper location. It was it was actually a great day, uh, and uh, but it was a it was a I got a, I got yelled at by a cop. He said I had an attitude problem, and I was thinking, if you really knew me, you would already have known that. <laughs> what uh, happened? Uh, uh, 
they blocked off all the streets. Okay. And so we were trying to get to where the parking lot was in the event. Yeah. And they wouldn't let us get anywhere near it. And they just kept yelling, just keep driving, keep driving. And I don't like being yelled at. And I'm not really a huge fan of cops. And uh, so I go up to this other street and the cop, and they're like waving at me at the parking lot, trying to get me to come in. I'm like, look, he's like, no. And it was literally 40 feet. And I'm like, right there. He's like, go around. He goes, you can't park here. Keep going. I go, there, there's a spot for me. I'm a vendor. And he just keeps yelling, go. So I drive around through an alleyway, go around the building and just cut right behind him where he's standing. <laughs> and so he turns and runs over to me. He's like, you subverting, blah, blah, blah. I go, That's, look, there's a spot. They're still waiting for me. I'm going. He's like, you got an attitude problem. I'm like, yes. Yeah, I have an attitude problem. I have an attitude problem. problem. <laughs> Best part about it. That morning, loading the car, I had a t-shirt on for one of my favorite punk bands called Bad Cop, Bad Cop. <laughs> and their logo is a donut. And it says Bad Cop, Bad Cop on it. And I said, you know, I'm going to Bakersfield. I'm going to represent my boys. And I took it off and put on a Raiders jersey, a oh. Raiders shirt. So I thought, wow, if I had that other shirt on, oh. I would have got shot. Yeah, you wouldn't have made it to the event. I'm kidding. I'm white. They wouldn't have shot me. <laughs> so uh, I would have been fine. So anyway, so we're at the event. It was a lot of fun. I got to have a booth next to Kevin Lively, our buddy, awesome. former Imagineer. Yes, yes. And like Tiki Tony was there and Big Toe, a lot of good artists. And it was just a fun thing. And uh, so the, at one point, this dad comes in with this kid. The kid was maybe nine or 10, let's say 10. Okay. And I sell metal signs. And he's grabbing the signs and he's like wiggling them like a like a saucer. They go, wah, 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 wah. Oh, no. And he puts it down, grabs the next one. Wah, 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 wah. And he just keeps doing it. And I'm looking at the dad. I'm standing right next to the dad. And dad's just staring at his phone. So after the fourth time, I'm like, is he going to like bend one or do something? Yeah. I already shot him. So they're already beat up. But The kid? <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> not yet. So he grabs it and does it like the fourth time. I said, and he went to grab another one. I said, yeah, they're all going to make the exact same sound. And the dad goes, <laughs> the dad looks up and goes, come on. And like grabs him by the arm and like yanks him out of the tent. <laughs> I'm like, was that, was that mean? And they're no. Like, they're like, it was nowadays maybe, but Yeah. Well Deb goes, it was it was a little more Professor Marley than Dr. Skipper. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay. He's he's a little harsher. Kids gotta learn. He's and he did. He learned the hard way. <laughs> uh but I tried to be as nice as I could to him. Kids, what are you gonna do? So I was able uh there's been a lot of uh interesting jungle cruise news this week. Uh, please enlighten me. All right. Did you hear about the Cambodian shrine? No. It has collapsed and is being removed. That's why the Jungle Cruise is closed. At Disneyland? Yep. No. Uh, uh, a friend of ours had seen pictures of it from a, a lead who was there or somebody, a trainer, whoever was there. Of uh, There's basically just like a wooden box around the tiger to keep it safe. But like the, the beams that go across the river are down, all the shrine. And evidently I heard from a different source filled with asbestos. <laughs> so they have to. Thank you, nineteen fifties in the uh, ancient Cambodia. Yeah, in wow. ancient Cambodia, they, they, that's why they're gone. Walt had it shipped over. <laughs> he did. <laughs> that's what killed Angkor Wat. That's what killed that whole civilization was asbestos, right. riddled with asbestos. Exactly. They got they got the they were all lungers. <laughs> so he said, "Yeah, there's asbestos, so they got to clean the whole area, and it's a oh hazmat thing." And and what does that mean for the Indy? I don't know. They're probably still fine. Just don't breathe. As you walk <laughs> through the right. exit, do not breathe. Asbestos, famously not airborne. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, so, yeah, so I, I was told that by a couple different sources. I thought that was fascinating. So who knows if they're going to rebuild wow. it or what they're going to do. I hope they do. That's uh, that's such a good mood setter right? at the start of the uh, the attraction. Right? Because you used to do the joke, here's the first monorail, or you point at the beam. <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. Oh, oh the real monorail's still there. <laughs> like, well, this is Mark Davis stuff from 1962 or 63. Yeah. Hopefully they just recreate it. I hope so, with, with less asbestos this time. Only slightly. Yeah. And then I heard another fun story. I cannot confirm this, but the source I heard from I, I trust, uh, he's a, a well-placed person who works in Adventureland, but I couldn't find anywhere else. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, during the writer's strike and during the actor's strike, they cleared out all the benches from the Enchanted Tiki Room, replaced them with tables, and they had a private event for Bob Iger and Disney investors that was closed to the public and not announced to anyone yeah, because they wanted to keep it quiet because the strike was going on. Okay. And so they had this huge fancy dinner while the birds show, because originally the Tiki Room was going to be a live dinner show. Yeah. Uh, and so they did it that way with Bob Iger. And his other millionaire investor friends. Wow. And it was, and so I knew a guy that was like, yeah, so we were there. They were setting it up and they're like, yeah, Iger's coming with 
all of these rich people and they're going to have a private party inside, but don't tell anybody because it looks bad because of the strike. Was was there any specific purpose other than like, look at how cool this party is? I, I don't know. All I knew was it was Iger and some investors. Interesting. That's all I could hear. Yeah. And that there was word to not spread the word. So they tell me and I'm telling everybody well, now. Uh, we'll keep that between us. <laughs> <laughs> Just it will not leave this room and microphones. Uh, th- so isn't that fascinating? That's super interesting. So he's trying to tell people he doesn't have the money to pay them while he's having private parties in a completely reconfigured tiki room. He's every CEO ever. He is. It'd be funny if they did the dinner experience like for the guests. Like mm-hmm. th- that, that could be like a thing, like a private ticketed thing where they right. set up the dinner show. But they they should have the birds reconfigured to where they can just like poop occasionally <laughs> on the tables, like a real bird. Right. It could be like a cream for your coffee, if it had like, <laughs> get, like Dairy Whip, like just stick it out and say, Jose, hit him, hit me. Hit him with right. a stick. Yeah. <laughs> And I guess Iger wanted to start the show and oh, like really? hit the button and they're like, well, there's a pause. And so, and so they were like terrified because you have to do it right. I'm like, how hard I, I, I don't know how many people I trained how to do that. Right. You hit a button, you have a couple seconds to go say your spiel and say, wake up Jose. <laughs> and then it starts. And then you call them a senorita. And then you call me, yeah, stop calling me a girl. And he says, senorita. And then I, when I would leave, I'd go, come on. <laughs> 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 I yeah. just love that Jose called Bob Iger. Hey, senorita. <laughs> All this rich investor friends laughed at him. Yep, yep. He's like, oh, I'm going to burn this place to the ground. Uh, you're a girl, Bob Iger. <laughs> you're a girl. Next week, it's going to be uh, Enchanted Tiki Room down for refurbishment. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Iger's throwing in there with a baseball bat after they all left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good old Tiki Room times. Another another thing yes. that I, I found out at Dapper Day, it'd been so long since I've been over to the park, it actually made me really miss it. Uh, oh, yeah? Yeah, I think I'm going to test the waters, but uh, I might be getting a magic key next year. No. I think so. You're going to be that guy. I'll be that guy. Uh, I've been thinking about it too. But then, but then uh, I see the lines and I see Genie Plus and I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I don't go on rides when I go. I, I drink and I watch people. That's why when you have the pass, you don't have to care. That's right. Speaking of drinking, they opened the the new bar at the Villas at Disneyland Hotel, which is this fancy new oh, yeah. Disney Vacation Club I add-on. I saw pictures of it. Bar looks really cool. I mean, we didn't go in, or I didn't go in. Um, but what I thought was weird and shows that nobody involved in this bar knows anything about the history of this person. Oh, no. Uh, the bar is heavily inspired by the work of Mary Blair, Famously an alcoholic in the later years of her life. Was she really? Yes. I had no idea. So probably not your best choice. (laughs) Honoring the memory of Mary Blair, here's this bar. Really? She would have enjoyed it. Yeah. A little too much. Huh. (laughs) Right next to the women's only restroom called the Bill Clinton restroom. (laughs) That's right. Just keeping this theme alive. (laughs) The Women's Lounge, sponsored by Bill Clinton. Not one human being in the entire process raised their hand and went... She was an alcoholic, right? Maybe we shouldn't. I, was that really true? I did not yeah, know. It was, towards the end of was, her life, she was uh, yeah. she had a problem with alcohol. Wow. Yeah. Okay. She'd show up at parties and they weren't thrilled she was there. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How weird. Is what it a is. Disney legend with some backstory to her. Who would have guessed? Right? <laughs> An animator with a drinking problem. That's so weird. How? What's the word? Expect it? <laughs> uh, so this is a fun thing. I can complete a story I told last episode about how I said that the OC register is out of news. Yes. Uh, I heard a story from a guy that was involved in the boat towing event. and uh, The one that made the front page of the OC register. Front page of the register. Yeah. um, That a skipper uh, was the the boat, you know, three shot or six shot and went back there to kind of take care of three shot, went back to take care of him. The skipper stopped the boat because the check engine light went on. So he just shut the engine off. What? They have check engine lights now. Yeah. And so he just stopped the boat. But it was still working. Still working fine. And they're like, well, can you drive it back to the dock? Well, the light went on. Well, do you feel safe driving it? It should still be safe. Like in our day, we'd say, shut up, turn it on. Why we waste? <laughs> we would just yell at them. But now that he had to keep repeating these same safety phrases and he wasn't feeling safe. So they had to. And then there's a, he said there was a guy in the back of the boat yelling, tow it, tow it. And he was like, why is this one guest like screaming at us to tow the boat? Yeah. Goes, so we get the tow ropes out. And the guy pulls out of his bag a huge camera and is filming it. And he works for Entertainment Weekly. 
Oh. Goes, so we're pulling the boat forward, and he's filming the whole thing like it's this big scandal. And the guy goes, the, the skipper I talked to goes, we're pulling boats to the dock at least once or twice a week. This is not. Yeah. It's For us, it's like not a big event. And it made the front page. It was a big deal. And it was uh, totally unnecessary. Uh, yeah. Do you think the Entertainment Weekly guy uh, just messed with the engine a little bit? Can you get under that easily? Nah, no. Nah. Not that easily. No. You have to lift something up, right? Yeah. 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 But uh, it was uh, interesting. So the, this uh, the skipper just saw that and just panicked and shut the engine off. I would have drove that thing till it, you know. Burst in the flames. I drive my own car until <laughs> <laughs> check engine light. That's for wussies. Keep oh. driving. <laughs> Tell me when it turns red. <laughs> right when you hear when you smell burning oil and rubber. That's when you stop. That's right. And not a moment before. And they weren't. They were close. They were not far from the end of the attraction, from what I understood from seeing some of the stuff. Not. I think it was after the hippo pool. It was. It was so it wasn't that far away. Yeah, they could have made it. So I talked with some other skippers about. Uh, and some other cast members about people are just losing their common sense on how to do things. Like yeah. cast members who should be running things and they just freak out and just stop. Uh, it's like, well, you can think about it and figure out what the problem is. They're like, no, I'd rather just stop. Wow. So they have talked about, oh yeah, we had all these reports because there were boat bumpings. So everybody got in you know, had to write those up. I'm like, wait, was there anybody in the boats when they bumped to the dock? No. Like, And you still wrote these people up. Well, yeah, it's policy. I'm like, it was policy when I worked there. No one did it. If the boat's empty... And they bump. Who who got hurt? Who cares? Mm-hmm. They're like, well, it's a safety, and we have to require. I'm like, you could think for yourself and think, well, there weren't guests here. You just tell the guy, hey, don't bump boats. You know better. Move it up. Yeah, that's what the great lead Jerry York did. Like, you know better. Don't do it again. Move it up. <laughs> right. And then that's the end of it. But now they have so like everybody there has to write a report, and it has to go to a manager, and then they have to write a report for just a little bump. And I go, just so you know, in this when I worked there in '96. If you were at un, at the no man's between unload and load and load was empty and you were just hanging out, taking time, the guy at unload would just shove your boat forward, <laughs> just hit the throttle, just go boom and shove you forward as, as they're yelling, move it up. <laughs> and in the seventies, they're like, oh yeah, I used to just hit boats all the time. If it was empty, just tag them and say, why are you wasting our time? Move up. And now it's like, oh. Paperwork. Crack Everybody up. shut the ride down. Everybody. And so I guess that was a big change that happened about 10 years ago. The jungle got a lot more like the rest of the park mm. where everybody writes statements about everybody. And it's a good way if you don't like somebody, yeah. everybody gangs up and writes statements. I'm like, that's not how jungle operates. That's a shame. It is a shame. Uh, I, uh, there was one time I was speaking about my boats uh, coming into the dock and I had I was full throttle coming into the dock. And I, I was just about to start to reverse throttle to slow down the boat uh-huh. and dock properly. Boat engine dies. But I still have all the momentum in the world oh, yeah. coming to the dock. So I'm like, hey, help. <laughs> everybody grabbed onto the yeah. boat. And I am thrilled that I had the the timing to, because the guests knew something was wrong. And we're coming yeah. in hard. And all the, the skippers on the dock are grabbing it to like slow it down. Yeah. Like, brakes, brakes, where are the brakes? <laughs> I've done that. I've stopped a boat like that. It's crazy. Yeah. It was, so that was fun. Now they'll just watch it hit and then start whipping out pieces of paper to write reports. <laughs> that's right. Like that is not, that's not how you do it. So uh, I have, uh, I have one more other Jungle Cruise story for you. Okay. A new one. Uh, I had a student at Cal State Fullerton ask me, oh, you're a skipper. I'm like, yeah, which house are you in? And I'm like, what? Which what? I go, I don't work at Harry Potter World. <laughs> I'm a skipper. No, no, no. There's houses at Jungle Cruise. Mm-mm. And I'm like, you got to find out. So I message our good friend, Kip, yeah. the legendary Kip Hart. I'm like, what is this deal? And he responds like, oh, yeah, they, they created a stupid personality test. It's like a couple questions, and then they put you in a house. And that's like your Jungle Cruise house. What? And the names were kind of, I'll, I'll see if I can find, let me find the names real quick. They were kind of clever, but also like, we're not Harry Potter. We're not. The only division at Jungle Cruise should be the funny skippers and the unfunny that's skippers. Right. That, that's the way Jesus had it. It's in the Old <laughs> Testament, and that's the way it should stay. So let me see. Are okay, you ready for the names of the houses? Yes. Here they are. Uh, the Boat Crashers Union. Well, which a is, lot of paperwork. I like that. <laughs> that's, <all paperwork. laughs> that's the worst one to be in. <laughs> oh, my God. I walked right to a callback. So the Boat Crashers Union... Uh, Banana Troop 5671. Okay. Uh, Aves Rara, the Upstream Society, and then the Patch. What's the Patch? I don't know. It just says the Patch. 
He said, those are the houses. Uh, and now you refer to the Jungle Cruise as the West Dock, and Florida is the East Dock. I like that. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so Boat Crashers Union, Banana Troops, 5671, Avis Rera, Upstream Society, and The Patch. So, now, do they have, obviously, different personalities attached to them? Yeah. And they, he goes, when, when Kip was there, said so they didn't call it a house, but now they do. What what house? Did Kip say what house he was in? Uh, he said he was in one and then quit and joined another. I'm like, <laughs> well, that's not really a test, is it? No. If you can just join, I would be in the Boat Crashers Union, because that's awesome. Oh, he said, I switched teams. He didn't say which one it was. Oh, I went from Avis Rera to the Banana Troop. Ah, so I'm, I'll, I would take Kip's lead. Wherever one he gravitates towards, I would assume that's Banana the one troop. we should be in. Banana Troop. Banana yeah, Troop. Right? We, you know, knowing skippers from our era, we would create our own house. That's right. And then say, you can't join it. Did you take the test? Yeah, then you're not eligible to join. I would make a different house every week. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not in any of those. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't heard of this one? And just make up some random <laughs> name? That's right. We're in the Dole Whippers. You don't know about the Dole Whippers? <laughs> Just make them like just super double entendres. <laughs> the dull whippers. That's the first thing I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so isn't that I, if it you know, builds morale or whatnot? That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I just don't like. I mean, I don't want to be one of those people that's like back in my day, meh, meh, meh. whatever floats your boat nowadays. Great. Yeah. But to me. I just like that you're skippers and then you're against the rest of the park. Yeah. Right? That's that's how, that's what I enjoy. You know, I you know what I bet that's management dividing and conquering. That's, that's what's right. going on. Yeah, it was. It was us versus the rest of the park and life was sweet. One hundred percent. Yes. <laughs> we were so obnoxious <laughs> all of the time. Um I have. Uh, we teased it last episode. This is the episode of closing the loop on some of the stuff we've mentioned in previous episodes. Yeah. I got more details. Of the holiday themed overlay that was pitched that never got used. And you haven't told me. Yeah. You just kept teasing it to me as well. So our friend Jody, back when he worked at Disneyland, came up with an overlay, a holiday themed overlay for Space Mountain. uh, Back when they were doing the Tomorrowland overlay in 98. uh, When they were turning it into uh, farmland or whatever. Uh, And so uh, he pitched and they never used it. I think it's a shame because it's really fun. Light up that thing with as many Christmas lights as you can stuff in that place. Strap a plastic reindeer to the front of the rocket. And uh, the soundtrack would be It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year by Andy Williams. I think it's genius. That's fantastic. They never used it. Like Christmas lights all over the structure inside. Inside. Yeah. So it's all lit up inside. You could see it. It'd be like a special little Christmas present. You could see the inside of the ride for the first yeah. time once a year. That would that would have been amazing. So my, my challenge is to anybody listening that has headphones, see how that syncs up with the ride. Fire up Andy Williams, the most wonderful time of the year while you're riding that ride. Oh, yeah. Film it. Let us know. Yeah. Yeah. I can I can picture that. That would be beautiful. I'd be thrilled. Lights on the ceiling and everywhere around you. Everything. Yeah. All the structures inside. That would be great. That'd be really cool. Right? Yeah. yeah. So he told me, oh my gosh, how did they not do this? And they didn't do it. Huh. Because money. Because money. You just go to Lowe's. Spend, right? Like, spend a couple hundred bucks. Get a plastic reindeer. Dude, you're done. A thousand dollars worth of Christmas lights. <laughs> that place would be nuts. <laughs> right? Right? That yeah. would be very cool. So yeah. That was uh that was the holiday overlay that never occurred at Space Mountain. Wow. So check it out. Try I that. W- Try I would have dug that. The most one. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it would be fun. Oh, speaking of singing yes. and holidays, I'm gonna shamelessly plug this every episode until uh, Christmas time. Do it. If you are ready for Christmas music, if you're ready for the holiday scene, check out my album on Spotify, A Very Merry T K Christmas, T I K A Y. It's my old superhero name uh, back in the day, my old crooner right. name Yeah, before I went with my real name. It's a lovely little six song album. That's It's like if Sinatra and Vince Guaraldi had a baby. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. And there's the one song in there that, that is my favorite that I had never heard before. Is it the Christmas song? Mm. The, Which one? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. It was Christmas one that- time sung in double quarter time or whatever. Da, da, da. Oh, yeah. That's the last song. The Christmas Waltz. The Christmas Waltz. It's never. that time of year. Yeah. 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 Well, listen to that voice. I just got a, I got a fraction of a penny for singing that. Nice. Yeah. All right. Good. I'm like Jay Z. But uh, 
I love that song. I've never heard it before. Really? So I can't to, believe that you so never heard me, that. to me, that is your song. I appreciate I've that. I've heard other versions. I'm like, nope. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Like your version was the first. Yes. So everything else measures up to that now. If only there was a way I could give the world amnesia. That was the first time they'd heard these then songs. Then we could claim to be the writers of all the Beatles songs. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Oh, that'd be a thrill. That would be awesome. I'd even be happy being Ringo in that scenario just to get some of that sweet cash. I mean, look, uh, Ringo gets a bad rap. Yeah. Uh, any one of us would trade places with Ringo. In a heartbeat. He, he did all right. Yeah, he did okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's still married to a Bond girl. He's doing okay. He's got all that money. Bond he does. girl. He does. Not too shabby. Have you heard the, the new Beatles song? Yes. I love it. I think it's fantastic. It's so good. My favorite thing on Disney Plus is that 15-minute Beatles clip called Now and Then. Oh. Where it goes through, and Peter Jackson, I guess, directed that cut. Yeah. It. And so it goes through the history of the song and how they made it. Yeah. And it shows like you know, the three remaining Beatles recording it in the 90s and mm-hmm. how it didn't work because they play the original and you can't really hear John that well over yeah. the piano at times. And so they used AI to just take it out mm-hmm. and bring his voice up. And they used George Harrison's guitar, but he died in what, 2001? Yeah. And it's just so it's literally the last Beatles song that will ever exist. I hope they go back to their last two songs, Real Love and Free as a Bird, and AI those. Yeah, that'd be fun. Because I like Free as a Bird, but John kind of sounds like he's a ghost. Yeah. And this way, with the new version, it sounds like he's with them. I would imagine they'll do like an AI remaster of every one of those songs at some point. I hope they would. Um, Yeah. Thrilled the bits. I've been aware of Now and Then for... Uh, probably a decade uh, just because from the demo and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I've always wanted them to finish this. It was like the one song I'm like, please, before yeah. you die, finish this song. Yeah. Uh, so thrilled the bits that they did. And it's beautiful. It's a really, a really touching kind of coda to the whole thing. It is. And on the single, uh, uh, if you buy, if you get the 45, go down to your local record store, get the 45 <laughs> for your turntable. Uh, that's, it has two songs. It has that song now and then, and it has "Love Me Do," which was their first single ever released. Oh wow! So it's like they kind of bookended it. Yeah, beginning and end. Yeah, that's pretty pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, have you seen the music video? Uh, I I don't know. I've, I watched the the Peter Jackson thing that fifteen minute. Yeah, he directed a music video for it. I have not seen that. It's I've never taken acid. Uh-huh. I think that's what it must be like. Dang, so we need to take some edibles and watch this. <laughs> that's right. I want to take some edibles and watch. Uh, um. Yellow Submarine. I've that, never seen it. Oh, it's it's trippy. <laughs> like as a kid watching it, I'm like, what the hell is this? Yeah. They go to Pepperland. Yeah. Okay. There's guys throwing apples. It's just it's <laughs> giant that's like the evil blue meanies. It's just like this was as a kid, I'm like, I don't even know what this is. This is just nuts. I I'm down to watch it. Yeah. The blue meanies and whatnot. Yeah. Um it was weird to me that the other day I realized it's twenty twenty three. And I have a choice between listening to new Beatles music or new Rolling Stones music. <laughs> like, right? What happened? That's it's really weird, huh? Yeah. And every movie's being remade. There's a third Willy Wonka remake coming out. I'll tell you what. Um, as much as I love Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, uh-huh. uh, Hugh Grant is an Oompa Loompa. <laughs> I'm sold. I didn't know he was an Oompa Loompa. Oh, you haven't seen it? I know. Charming as hell. I am such a big fan of the Johnny Depp one. Really? To me, that's the that is the the best version of it. Now, uh, everybody listening, this is uh, peak Dave Marley. <laughs> that's so true. This is the perfect example. That's so true. Of Dave yeah. liking something that no one else yeah. likes. I swear to God, I don't do this on purpose. <laughs> I swear to God. Even- now, what about is it that you like Michael Jackson and always wish he had a chocolate factory? Well, I think the songs are better. Okay. I think the storyline is, and I found out that Roald Dahl, the 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 author, mm-hmm. he hated the original version mm-hmm. movie, hated it, and that his widow saw this version and said, "This is closer to the book. He would have loved this version." Interesting. He would have adored it because he hated the Gene Wilder version. But what bothered me as a kid still bothers me is right Augustus Gloop, right Veruca Salt. They all get busted for doing stuff. Yeah. Charlie and his grandpa do stuff. They just don't get caught. And they're white. And as a kid, well, they are white. Uh, weren't all of them? But he, he, he wins. <laughs> well, one of them was blue towards the end. That's why none of them were shot by the Bakersfield PD. That's uh, right. And so as a kid watching it, I'm like, well, he got a, uh, taught me a, a lesson that clearly I've adapted to my life. 
Oh, as long as you don't get caught, it's all good. You still get a chocolate factory. <laughs> Didn't he get caught though? I don't think. Didn't no. they know? He's, but he still won at the end, and he still had like the gobstopper in his pocket that he was going to steal and give to the you know Slugworth. And I always thought it was because he came clean that he okay Be- because all the other kids Sluggo or whatever yeah <laughs> whatever the the rival candy company yeah was telling all the kids get some info for us yeah and you know it'll be beneficial for everybody yeah and. Charlie stole that, almost got chopped up. Uh, him and his grandpa almost got chopped up by the fan. Yeah. But he came clean at the end. He gave him the thing and he said, you know, sorry, Mr. Wonka. I think that I thought I always thought that was why he gave him okay. the factory. Kid's still a little thief. Absolutely. I would have smacked him and kicked him out of my factory. Well, uh, he ran it into the ground shortly after. <laughs> he did. He had no business <laughs> yeah. running a business. Don't of that let size. children run giant multinational corporations. <laughs> That's right. So I didn't Then you'll have the- Tesla. Exactly. But I thought it was just that part as a kid just bothered me. So I like the fact that, and I love Johnny Depp's portrayal of yeah. of him that he was like desperately trying to fit in, and yet he was so awkward that he just couldn't. I like that whole like vibe. I don't remember that movie for the life of me. Oh, it's so it's so good, and uh, and that the Charlie is a good kid to the whole movie. Never steals anything. It's all good. I'll put it on my list. Oh, God. <laughs> right next to Hamilton. That's and, right. Uh, oh, we're never, oh, we're going to see. There's a movie theater by our house that shows classic movies. Mm-hmm. And this week, they're showing The Treasure of the Sierra Madre with Humphrey Bogart. Mm. One of my favorite all-time movies. The inspiration for Indiana Jones. Is it really? His outfit. Treasure, oh, Really? Really? The treasure of Sierra Madre, uh, Bogart, right? Yeah. His outfit in that is the inspiration, the direct really? inspiration for Indiana Jones's outfit. Oh, I can't wait to see it again. Yeah. I have it on Blu-ray because I'm a nerd, but uh, I love it. And I love it. It was brave for Humphrey Bogart because he was this leading man. And in this movie, he plays a very unlikable, very mentally unstable kind of murdery guy. Oh, wow. And you're like, who would, what famous leading man would want to play this? <laughs> Where he's clearly not the good guy. And yeah. He's clearly out of it. That's Bogart. Uh, I mean, I Just guess. Do whatever the hell he wants. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we went to, thanks to uh, Nikki B. Uh huh. Shout out Nikki B. We went to the Turner Classic Movies Film Festival and got oh, to yeah. see Casablanca, yes. this new restored print uh, at the Man's Chinese Theater over the summer. And uh, man, Bogart, when, when Bogart's Bogarting, good Lord. Yeah. No, nothing better. Right. Yeah, yeah, I read a great book about the making of Casablanca. Really? Nobody thought it was going to be big. Neither leading actor really wanted to do it. The director said you can hire any sound person you or any uh, any camera operator you want, director of photography, except this one guy. I hate him. And the studio's like, well, that's the next on the list, so you have to use him. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, wow. And like Bogart's wife at the time was uh, like would hide behind scenery. And like come out and yell at him because she thought he was going to have an affair with with Ingrid Bergman. <laughs> and like they were called the battling Bogarts because they would be screaming and yelling at each other. That's so weird. Like he's like, here's looking at you, kid. Like, don't look at her too hard. Don't look at her. Stop looking at her. Don't kiss that woman. But she, <laughs> they said she'd be hiding behind scenery watching. But then he left her and married a girl that was 19 when he was 50. So there you go. She had probable cause Good to work be hiding if- behind that airplane. <laughs> what was the name of the one that he, he left her like? For the 19 year old. Um, they got divorced, I think, before okay. that. Uh, Lauren Bacall. Lauren, he he left his wife for Lauren Bacall. Yes. Okay. Lauren I Bacall so. was the one that the coined the term rat pack. Really? Yes. Wow. She uh they were a bunch of drunks and she called them a bunch of your just a little rat pack here. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. I like Lauren Bacall because uh, in, in uh, Key Largo, that's their big movie mm-hmm. together. She's 19, it's her first film. And she's cute, but if you look at her when she's 70, she looks the same. So when she's 19, you're like, I remember watching it. That's a 19-year-old girl. She looks like she's in her mid-30s. So it's kind of like the world said, okay, Lauren, here's the deal. You're (laughs) always going to look like a 35-year-old woman, no matter how old or how young you are. That's not a bad deal. So when you're 15, people, are you 35? And when you're 70, are you 35? (laughs) I hope when I'm 70, I look like a 35-year-old woman. Well, thanks to plastic surgery, that can be done. (laughs) That's easy to take care of. That's right. Yeah, right? This is a a vintage deep dive, this episode. I got one more weird, wild story for you if you want to hear it. Hit me with it. Okay. Uh, 
my daughters, my children are, are telling me stories about my life that's making sense to them. And like, you know what I used to think? And they're like, like when you're a kid, there's weird things that you in your family or events and you don't understand it. Like, uh, but it, it makes sense to you later on. Like when I was a kid, uh, I was watching the news and they talked about there were gorillas had taken over the airport in Kenya. And I thought it was gorillas, the animals. I always thought the same thing. Because I time. was obsessed with Planet of the Apes. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I, I was begging my parents, please take me to Kenya. I was seven. It's happening. Please take me to Kenya. <laughs> They've trained the apes to ride horses and they're shooting guns. I was convinced <laughs> it was just like the movies. I'm like, here we go. I want to see the apes take over. <laughs> and years later, my mom's like, why did you always want to go to Kenya? <laughs> like, I want to see the gorillas. I want to see the gorillas. I didn't know it was with a you gorillas. I was gorillas. So with my- their leader, their violent leader, Jane Goodall. <laughs> <laughs> she had a dark side. She did. Yes. Uh, so my oldest daughter tells me, dad, uh, for the longest time, I thought one of your best friends was John Travolta. What? <laughs> she goes, I thought you were skippers. I thought you guys hung out all the time. <laughs> I'm like, John, John Travolta, John Travolta. She's like, yeah, I was convinced. Well, here's the deal. Why and how? I have been mildly obsessed with Scientology for a long time. Okay. Cause there's all kinds of religions. Believe what you want. But this one is so clearly just made up. Well, I mean, your your thetan levels are off the charts, my so the- I get it. My thetan levels are a little high, so I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm clearly a suppressive person. But <laughs> I taught a class on new religions in America just so I could obsess about Scientology for three solid weeks. Oh, wow. Like, I went into detail. We watched, we watched the South Park episode about it. I was explaining all this stuff. So I guess I mentioned him more because I was convinced for the longest time. You know the show Entertainment Tonight? Yes. I was convinced it was controlled by the Church of Scientology. Really? Like to the point where I looked at the producers and the writers and I checked to see if they were members. Because <laughs> every time they did a story about some event, it was a Scientologist. Like they have our official legal correspondent was a Scientologist lawyer. Marsha Clark from the O.J. Simpson trial yeah. was a Scientologist. So she was their official lawyer and their other official lawyer was Greta Van Susteren, also a Scientologist. So- you, at some point, did you have like a big uh, I made a chart. board? I made a chart. Did you? I made a chart. <laughs> here's here's who's their official. Lawyer. And like, here's our official. Like, it was like some other person. And it was like Lisa Marie Presley. I'm like, oh, my God. This is clearly controlled by the Church of Scientology. And so whenever there was a movie with Tom Cruise or John Travolta, they just blasted it. I would even watch Entertainment Tonight. And there was another one like Hollywood show. Yeah, there's like Hollywood tonight. There's extra. Yeah, extra. Yeah. I would watch them both and see. Okay, they gave they gave John Travolta five minutes. They didn't mention him on this show, and I was like seeing. Wow. I had a whole. I went. I went. You went mentally, down a rabbit I hole. I went mentally ill with charts to prove that Entertainment Tonight was controlled by the Church of what, Scientology. What did you end up uh, finding out? What What was your final conclusion? I found nothing definitive. Okay. Uh, but but it was beyond the realm of coincidence. Interesting. And so my my daughter, we're, we're watching something and John Travolta's there. She's like, yeah, I thought you guys were friends. Do you think, oh my goodness, what? did you ever make the correlation that E.T., extraterrestrial Scientology? <sighs> Maybe. Hail Zenu. Hmm? Hail Zenu. <laughs> yeah, she was, I thought he was a skipper because you got you talked about him all the time. <laughs> this is why. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh, because you, you were growing up while I was dangerously obsessed with this <laughs> fake-ass religion. So, uh yeah, she just told me that last week. Like, yeah, I thought you and John Travolta, oldest friends. I, I've i known you for a long time. Uh-huh. I never knew you had an unhealthy obsession at some point um, for blowing the lid off of entertainment tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that that just came to me. I'm watching. I'm like, that's weird. They they really focus on Scientologists a lot. So we're going to we're going to release this episode. We're going to disappear. We are. So we are. Gonna happen. We're going to Tom Cruise won't talk to us anymore. What he's going to do is he's going to he's going to jump off of an airplane Come through the roof of the house. Yep. Choke hold us. <laughs> We're never going to be seen again. We're both much taller than him, so I think we'll be okay. That's true. <laughs> he could probably uh, he could probably come through the chimney, and this house doesn't have a chimney. <laughs> <laughs> All we'd have to do if he was choking us, we just stood up. <laughs> uh, this broke today. Okay. At the II in uh, Orlando, Florida, that theme park convention. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Going okay. On. Um, there's conflicting reports, but I'm going to go, I'm going to double down and go with, this is probably correct. Okay. They, uh, let it slip or announced that, uh, Pandora Mm -hmm. is coming to California adventure. 
Because they were always saying it's coming to the parks. They oh. hadn't really said where it's going. That makes baby Jesus cry. <laughs> but it made me excited because in a much earlier podcast, uh-huh. I said, it's coming to California Adventure and it's going to take over Condor Flats. And I think that's still true. Oh. I hope they do it. Well, they can't do it behind Tower of Terror. No, I, I think there's so much wilderness. They have a hangar, which would feed into the oh, yeah. military taking over Pandora or having a little foothold on there. Yeah. They can replace Soren with the Banshee ride, riding that Banshee, oh, yeah. uh, which coincidentally, riding the Banshee is a, uh, a nickname <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, riding the old Banshee, if you know Riding I mean. that old Banshee. Hello. Uh, uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to finish that joke. <laughs> <laughs> There's worse ways to spend a day. <laughs> there it is. That's uh, $50. Oh, exactly. $50 to ride the Banshee in, in certain in, areas in, of in the world. In a sketchy neighborhood, it's yeah. 50 <laughs> Nicer places, it's a lot yeah. more. <laughs> but uh, they can replace that. And I would say if they do take over that area, if they turn it into Pandora, I wouldn't be surprised if they rethemed the uh, uh, Rapid River ride, Grizzly River. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. the Navi water voyage Something. thing. Oh, I just can't hate that idea more than I do. But I will say, to cover my bases, yes. equally plausible, they make it the expansion of the parks that's going to go over by the uh, the Pixar Hotel. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, the problem is if it was there, it would be back up to the hotels. Yeah. The hotels would be part of Pandora. My problem is I, and again, this may be David Marley liking, hating movies that everyone else loves. I think Avatar was just hot garbage. I've never seen it. So bad. Have you seen Fern Gully, the cartoon when you were a kid? I have. Literally Fern Gully. Oh. Have I, you seen Dances with Wolves? Uh, No. Okay. Really? Literally the same plot. Like to the point where I watched, I watched the first Avatar and I said, with God as my witness, if I had a student that turned in a story like this, I would have failed them and says, you just copied Fern Gully and Dances with Wolves. There is nothing <laughs> creative. You just, you just changed the scenery. Uh, as F. a as a senior art director, uh, I will say the only thing I know about Avatar is uh, I love. Oh yeah, I got a promotion. You got the promotion. Yeah, I got the promotion. Yeah, that's dude, right. you buried the lead. That's fantastic. <laughs> I got the. That promotion. is so good and well deserved. Thank you very well much. Well deserved. Yeah, I got yeah. a little promotion at my job. I'm a senior art director. That's now. awesome. Yeah. All right. Uh, Does it I, give you like uh, interns to kick around? I can give you if you watch Thirty Rock, you can get some good lines from Tracy Morgan to yell at your interns. <laughs> Perfect. What, when I filmed a, a pilot in Florida, I walked onto the set and I started yelling some of them, and the crew laughed, and the producer started. Uh, he was really upset. What is what is he going? Because I walked in, I said, "Where are the French fries? I did not ask for. You guys need to anticipate me." <laughs> and they laugh, and he looks at me like because later on he's like, I, "I really thought you were like a nightmare because oh, you would yell no. things because I." Because he asked me, all right, did you look at the script? And I said, I literally quoted Tracy Morgan. I go, the script interferes with my process. Let's just film this 120 times and see what we get. <laughs> and the crew roared. So I'd say it. The crew would laugh. He'd look at the crew. They'd look at me like, is he joking or not joking? There is nothing better for people like us yes. and worse for <laughs> like producers <laughs> then when the crew laughs at yes. what you're doing because you know they're not supposed to laugh at what you're doing yeah. so when you get them to laugh you're like well i gotta keep doing this <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> i read i read the book one of my favorite books of all time called harpo speaks oh. it's an autobiography of harpo marx it is stunningly funny and good i've said but, this before huh? i would love if that book was just 300 <laughs> blank pages <laughs> the audio book is just a horn <laughs> 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 Now for the most dangerous part of our show, the return to civilization. If you've enjoyed the show and want to show some support while also getting some adventurously good extras, visit patreon.com slash the jungle podcast. Also, if you could be so kind as to follow the lads on Instagram, I know they'd be thrilled. At Dr. Skipper Marley and at the dot Trevor dot Kelly. See you hip skips next time in the jungle.